What would happen if Zoro ate a devil fruit? Or Sanji? Or Nami? Or Nose Boy? Toy Robot? Or perhaps even Uncle Fish? Well, we actually know the answer to this question. I guess it's questions plural. Because Etchira Oda has revealed canonically which devil fruits each currently not fruit using straw hat would have. And let me tell you, it's not what you'd expect. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and I've been eating fruit for about three decades now and still somehow no magic powers. So I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm a bit upset about that. Particularly since our Straw Hat Pirates have been assigned their magical powers by the Lord of all fruit vendors, Echira Oda. Here's a weird thing though. The Straw Hats have never found a devil fruit. They've been sailing this world for almost 25 years of real lifetime now, not that much in world time. But unlike most prominent crews, they have never stumbled across one of these filthy yet juicy power snacks. That's going to change today though, because we've got six surprise fruits for each found neglected crew members, who are Zoro, Sanji, Nami, Usopp, Frankie and Jinbei. Also, as we discover what their powers are, I will be drawing portraits of them because I'm, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm not a good artist or even an artist. And also everyone I've consulted about this thinks it is a terrible idea. So let's just look forward to that. Three of those consultants being Game Bear Advanced Melanie B and Beat Zero PP, which is a bit sad. I feel like you should be beating at least one, but all three of whom consulted themselves with sheer glory by doing the amazing thing of pressing the subscribe button for the grand line review, which will result in consistent injections of One Piece culture being administered directly into your YouTube feed. And if you want to be our next subscriber of the day, then hit the button and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. All right, let's start with Sanji. Before I reveal the fruit Oda gave him, I did also ask for your opinions in the community section, and a lot of you went with the classic Mero Mero no Mi, giving Sanji some literal added firepower. Although another answer I quite liked was, Sanji would do well with Streisand's fruit, the big mom Shefifer, who could cut things and turn them into food. And even though the food does taste awful, I do like this answer, because I feel like Sanji is such a superb chef that he would be able to make anything taste good. Meanwhile, we also had some classic options. Sanji would love an invisibility fruit, to watch Nami bathe. As well as, what about Sanji using Kinemon's fruit power in order to dress women as he pleases? And those were the majority of the comments. So we're really not putting too much good faith in Sanji's priorities here. However, that is for good reason because the official answer isn't much better. According to Oda, Sanji would eat the Sui Sui no Mi, which was Senor Pink's devil fruit that allowed him to swim through solid substances. With Oda's specific comments being, it allows one to slip through walls or swim on the ground. If given to Sanji, it would become quite the nasty ability. Nasty, meaning would use to infiltrate some, how shall we say, female private spaces? This was a big surprise though, especially considering Sanji's canonical desire to eat the suke suke no mi for some of that delicious invisibility. Outside of the world of naked ladies though, this fruit could be pretty amazing for Sanji, particularly because he does have at least one water-based ability being blue walk. But then again, if he was on solid ground, then he could just use regular walk, you know, like the rest of us do. It would be something of an interesting duality, I suppose, because then Sanji would have both a fire and water effect. I mean water, but but not water. Like solid water, which I guess is technically ice, but this, this is not ice. All right, and are you ready? Because this is the portrait of Sanji that I drew, and it's basically just him in Speedos. Uh, ready to uh, ready to swim and stuff. Did I mention I'm drawing these all completely from memory as well? And apparently one of the only key things I can remember about Sanji is that he has very, very hairy legs. Next up is Usopp, and of every straw hat here, this boy has some of the greatest potential. With one impressive double bill Grand Fleet suggestion being, Usopp would benefit from either Kandro or Viola's fruit, with Viola's fruit giving him extended vision and Kandro's fruit giving him creative ways to attack, which I think would be amazing. And I'm definitely more interested in Kandro's fruit. Usopp is a fantastic artist with a wild imagination. So giving him the ability to bring any drawing to life would potentially risk making him overpowered within the non hockey tier of punch fighters, especially because he'd probably use it to bring all sorts of crazy easy gadgets to life. Stuff that he can imagine, but may not necessarily have the knowledge to construct. Meanwhile, another Grand Fleet member suggested, this might sound strange, but Usopp should have Bello Betty's fruit, which is the Kobo Kobo no Mi, the power to encourage people to awaken their full potential, which would have been very useful on more than one occasion with Usopp. Any slobby obviously comes to mind. When it fell to Usopp to inspire Luffy to get up and punch a big old kitty cat in his whisker clad face, as well as the rest of his body. The rest of his body was also important. But then again, Usopp 
is only good with words sometimes. The fruit would be utterly wasted when it came to his various illnesses and cowardice and such. However, the official answer from Oda is the Poke Poke no Mi, a devil fruit that you may never have heard of, but you have seen used very briefly with Blamenko, one of the Whitebeard commanders. It's essentially the ability to create seemingly infinitely deep pockets within one's body, which is great for Usopp because it means he can store an infinity of gadgets and weapons and plants and art supplies and whatever he wants. Like I'm used to Usopp metaphorically pulling something out of his ass to win a fight, like, you know, a giant inflatable hammer, where, where did that come from? But with this fruit, he could quite literally pull something out of his ass. So thank the Lord of crap that he doesn't have it. And Oda's specific comments were, the perfect pocket for someone like Usopp who always has something up his sleeve. Master author Echiro Oda, they're confusing the concepts of pockets and sleeves. I mean, I guess both of them are just holes for things, but then again, that also describes a lot of things. So we need to get just a little bit more specific. All right, and here, <laughs> here is my Usopp. I think it's pretty much just your standard Usopp, except his pockets are much bigger. Now, in my defense, I think it's very difficult for a completely talentless hack to do this ability justice. So this, this is just kind of what we've got to work with. Now, remember that Nami also exists. And in terms of fictional fruit, she's a very intriguing case. A lot of Grand Fleet members commented with the desire to give her some form of Logia, an existing one being the Yuki Yuki no Mi, Monet Snow Logia, which should exist and be ripe for nomming because Monet is, of course, dead. And there was even a very popular theory back in the day that Monet's fruit would be reincarnated within Nami's Mikan trees aboard the Thousand Sunny. Other commenters also mentioned the possibility of a cloud Logia or a wind Logia or just, just any kind of Logia really. Elemental control was a very popular and fitting choice for Nami. She'd almost certainly do well with any type of Logia, even the Swamp Logia. And who knows, it may even give Nami access to a Caribou style tongue, which is cursed, and I regret saying that. As for actual answers though, this is better than any of us could have expected because Oda states, the Goro Goro no Mi, a true weather lady. Now no one can stop her anymore, apart from Luffy. Although the problem here being that sure, Luffy is the natural counter to lightning, but Nami is also the natural counter to Luffy. So no, Nami just plain becomes invincible across the board. The idea of Nami with NL's devil fruit is amazing though. I mean, she's already kind of capable of his power just with a ton of extra steps. I can imagine she'd actually use it a lot better due to having more advanced knowledge of lightnings as a phenomena, as opposed to NL who is more along the lines of, ooh, I can make big booms. I am God now. Which I will say was a slightly arrogant approach considering he was defeated by a glorified human rubber band. A low gear ability would also stop Nami from being injured so easily, you know, less of a glass cannon and more like a magic intangible cannon, which is always preferable. Uh, now as for Nami, at first I thought I'd draw her in some some kind of cool NL cosplay, but then I remembered I couldn't draw. So instead, so instead I just drew Nami making the NL face. And dad, uh, that, that gets the point across, right? I'm definitely craving some sword action though. And for that, we will now turn to Frankie because he has a big old Franken sword. There was a fairly strong consensus within the Grand Fleet that Frankie would benefit from Eustace Kid's devil fruit. The Jiki Jiki no Mi, because it would essentially give Frankie the power to engineer crazy stuff without actually needing to invest the time into the engineering aspect of engineering. He could create a whole army of General Frankies or even use the fruit to repair his own General Frankie after being damaged in combat. It's hard to say if he'd want some Something like that though, you know, I feel like Frankie would consider it cheating somehow. If engineering was a game and it was possible to cheat, this this would be cheating. A good shipwright slash mecha pilot should not need magical powers to do their job. And I guess Oda agrees because he's gone down a slightly different yet incredibly more predictable path of assigning Frankie with the Buki Buki no Mi, which was the weapon fruit used by Baby Five. And Oda's comment on this being, can't get any better than this for an ability for Frankie. And I have to agree. I'd also think he'd be able to unlock 100% more of its potential than Baby Five did. This fruit has always been quite confusing because its functionality is incredibly vague. You know, does the fruit come with a set menu of weapons to transform into? Or does the fruit allow the user to transform into any weapon that they are capable of thinking of? Because if it's the second, then this is an Usopp level scenario. Frankie with Baby Five's devil fruit would then be like Usopp with Kanjuro's drawing fruit. With Frankie's creative mind, there would be just an infinity of weapons. Although priority number one would of course be installing nipple lines 
reliance on every single living being, as they well should be. Now with Frankie, he is so big that I ran out of space trying to draw him, so I decided to focus on the uh, the most important aspect of his weaponry, which are of course the nipple lights. And this is this is easily the worst drawing so far. Um, emphasis on the word so far. Let's talk about the real sword lad now, because the Grand Fleet had some strong feelings here, including Robin's Hana Hananumi. More hands, more swords, more power. Which I guess has some truth to it. I mean, if Zoro could carry more swords, he probably would. For example, there's this really questionable image of Zoro using Yontoryu or four sword style on the internet, except the fourth sword is clenched between his behind cheeks, which honestly, I don't think is too much more ridiculous than using a sword in your mouth. At all times, we should remember that that is weird. At the very least, it would probably offer him some protection from sneak attacks. However, Oda has a very intriguing answer here, stating that Zoro would use Kaido's devil fruit and become a mythical dragon. But more specifically, he says, I'd want the sword to turn into a dragon rather than Zoro. And that's fair. I would also want the sword to turn into a dragon. If the sword turned into Zoro, then that, that would just be weird. I love the idea that Zoro is not becoming the fruit user in this hypothetical. He's gaining a devil fruit infused weapon. But because that does go a little bit against the spirit of this video, we have another Grand Fleet suggestion, which is Mr. One's fruit, so he himself becomes a blade. And as if Zoro wouldn't want that. His whole life is swords. Well, swords and alcohol, I suppose, but mostly swords. And really, how can you become the world's greatest swordsman if you aren't even a sword man? Drake, you'll me hawk, you are a fraud. Now, when it comes to Zoro, I think I've conflated a couple of different ideas here. I mean, I did draw a sword and I did draw that sword as a dragon, but I drew that dragon sword in his butt. So this is a Yontoryu style Zoro featuring Kaido's devil fruit. And I'm, I'm a lot more proud of this than I think I should be. To our newest straw hat now, and unfortunately Jinbei does not have a canonical devil fruit because the person who asked this question to Oda in an SBS forgot to include him or deliberately did not include him. And you know, I'm not calling the person who asked this question to Oda racist, but I am heavily implying it. That's all right though, because the Grand Fleet came through with Jinbei suggestions as many people did opt to saddle him with the Sui Sui no Mi, which was earlier given to Sanji. So that sounds a bit of a conflict, although it does make uh, a bit of sense. I'm not gonna say a lot, but a bit, because if we're going to take away Jinbei's ability to swim in the water, then I guess we should balance things out with the power to swim on land at the very least. Jinbei would become such a force to be reckoned with because it would be like fighting a fishman in their natural environment. But we also had this. I wonder if Jinbei's fishman karate would work with the Gura Gura no Mi, since it allows you to grab the Air, which is an interesting thought because Fishman Karate does kind of mimic Whitebeard's abilities or Whitebeard's ability mimics them, one or the other, just with water instead of air. So I imagine that Jinbei would have a natural advantage using it just due to being a master of a very similar art form already. So as for Jinbei, I have drawn him with Whitebeard's Devil Fruit, but I have also drawn him as a triangle because that's pretty much what I see Jinbei as, a wise, masterful old triangle. Please do feel free to comment with which straw hat portrait you think is the best or actually, you know, what, let's, let's change that. Please do comment with which straw hat portrait you think is the least worst. But I also do have one more Jinbei devil fruit suggestion, which is the cum cum fruit. And no, I am not drawing that. But I will draw your attention to this next video because there's always more to learn, explore, and experience with this wonderful series. So I look forward to seeing you there.